So if you know Edifier, you know that they build high quality products with very good performance at a super budget friendly price point. And lately with the Neobuds Pro that you see all around YouTube, you can see that they are upping their game with their high res audio as well. So today we're taking a look at the latest ANC headphones from Edifier with support for high res audio at a price tag that is usually associated with budget headphones. So will they be any good? Welcome to a review of the Edifier W820NB. Hello, my name is Sean and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I do a lot of tech reviews as well as unboxing and if that is something that interests you, do consider subscribing to this channel, leave a thumbs up on this video as well as share this video to all your friends around. And with that said, let's get on with a review of the Edifier W820NB. So our headphones today were sent over to me by my friends at Edify Malaysia and I was really excited to review these headphones because they are everything that I look for in the headphones, high res ANC. But is it what it seems? Let's find out. So this headphone retails for about 250 Malaysia Ringgit and that's about 60 US and I think it's a really super price for its performance. So if you're interested in getting these headphones, do check out my links in the description below. So you see, when you cram a lot of technology into a product and keep the price low, there is definitely areas that you have to cut down in order to keep the price down. So that is the case with the W820NB and build quality wise, Edifier markets these as lightweight headphones that are light and easy to carry around but I do have a couple of areas I want to highlight with the design. So the headphones come in mostly plastic built, no metal parts here literally and even the band extension here is made out of plastic. Probably the only metal parts are the diaphragms and the screws that is used along the headphones. So these headphones weigh about 250 grams and in contrast the Sony WH-1000XM4 with very good build quality comes in at 254 grams. So you can see all of those plastic doesn't really seem to shed much weight. So the band of the headphones is really strong and doesn't have any noticeable creaking which is good. And at the top of the band you notice a nice soft padding made of a nice memory foam material but they are not the thickest here so if you press deep into it you will be able to feel the plastic inside the band. So as mentioned earlier the band extension here is fully made out of plastic there's no metal materials here and moving down the cups of the headphones are really cool looking and have a nice clean look similar to what you get with the Sony XM4s. So the padding on the ear cups are also very soft and very comfortable and it's made of this super plush, super soft memory foam material. So you can see how slow it goes back into place and it feels a lot more dense compared to the one on top of the headband. This one is also memory foam but you can see that it snaps back into place faster. These ear cups are super comfortable and super nice. And one thing that I never really thought was a problem before was the lack of left and right indicators inside of the ear cups itself. And it's something that you never really thought about until it's not there. And the left and right indicator now is on the band itself. So if you can see up here, there's the left and right over here, you have the right. So now it's placed on the headband itself. But one way to know which side is which really quickly is that you have to find the controls. And if you find the controls, that is the right ear cups. So focusing in onto the right ear cups a little bit, um, at the bottom here you get a type C charging port uh, for you to top up the headphones and the LED indicator to indicate that the headphones are charging. And the bulk of the controls are on the right side of the ear cups. So you get a volume rocker here, which uh, also acts as a track skipping, a power button in the middle that also acts as the play pause button. And if you double press on it, will call out your assistant as well. Below that, you get a Bluetooth button, uh, but Edifier calls this a multi-function button. So if you press one, it will toggle you between the different ANC modes and ambient mode. And if you double press it, it allows you to enter or exit gaming mode. So these are pretty good controls for the headphones itself. So two more things I want to highlight with these headphones is that number one, these edges here 
are super sharp so you really got to be careful using these headphones because these parts are not as polished as i hoped so another last thing that i want to point out is that these headphones don't come with any carrying case so it's not as easy to travel with them uh putting it in your bag is fine so if you really don't want to damage your headphones maybe you have to look for a third party headphones case so in terms of battery life i think the w820 nb is also really good and with anc it gives you about 29 hours of continuous playback time turning off anc you get about 50 hours of playback time so there's no rated quick charging here but it only takes about one and a half hours to charge up the headphones from empty so this headphones doesn't have the most advanced chipset for wireless connectivity and comes with a Bluetooth 5.0 chipset that supports only the AAC and SBC codec. So you'll notice that these headphones are certified high res audio, however that doesn't apply to wireless as these headphones do not come with high res audio wireless and use pretty mediocre codecs for Bluetooth transmissions. So in order to enjoy high res, you need to connect it with the Type-C cable and use them wired. There are also no rated water resistance on these headphones so it's not something you want to get wet with and these headphones also do not come with multi-point considering that most headphones do come with some form of multi-point i guess it is one way that edifier tries to cut back to keep the price low so using the Edifier Connect app with these headphones is simple and straightforward. You get quite simple features here, nothing too fancy. And when you're connected to the headphones, the homepage here will show you toggles for your ANC or you can also toggle between ambient sound and the ambient sound here is similar to most of the other Edifier headphones or earbuds. You can also select six different levels of ambient sound uh, to choose from. So that's really cool. Apart from that, swiping to the right, you will also be able to see the battery percentage of the headphones. And at the last page here, you get to toggle between gaming mode or no gaming mode. And if you click on the settings icon on the top right, you will be able to access a couple of additional features. So inside here, you get to toggle between various different options. So one of it is the user manual and you get quite a comprehensive uh, user manual guide inside here to use your headphones. And you can turn off the headphones and you can also control the prom volume of your headphones so apart from that that's basically all of the features you get inside the edifier connect app for these headphones so i'm familiar with the anc algorithm of edifier and the w820 nb doesn't disappoint with a rated 38 db of reduction in practice this anc is really impressive putting it on and turning on the headphones you feel like there's a vacuum that sucks out all the ambient noise and with that said you do get a bit of that vacuumy feeling if you don't have any music playing for most use cases like low humming road noise or commute noise most of it gets cut out pretty effectively high pitch chatters and surprisingly tv noise gets cut out really well without music playing it cuts out normal chatting by about 80 percent so that's very impressive with music it practically wipes out everything so two things that i found with these headphones that could be better is the ability to cut airplane cabin noise and the edifier is okay but not the most effective with a noticeable 50 percent of reduction in the cabin noise this is without any music playing and if you play music you get a tiny hint of cabin noise through uh, and they're not cutting 100% off so last thing is that you get minor wind noise with this headphone so if you have a direct wind source like a fan then you're definitely going to get some buffering noise as well all in all i'm going to give these headphones an 8 out of 10 for anc performance so the sound signature on these headphones is really nice, pretty polished and sounds really good. But do take note that if you want to use these headphones with high res quality, you need to plug them in. So let's start with using these headphones wirelessly. And the W820NB gives you quite full and dynamic sound signature that sounds really nice. I think turning on these are fantastic and even when it's running through Bluetooth, they really sound good. Bass on these are not the most thumping, it's present, it's sufficient, but doesn't give you that crazy rumbling sub bass. Just good enough for most music to sound really nice. Vocals and meets on this are clear and very forward without any hint that they are hiding behind any instruments. So before you plug in these headphones to enjoy the high res audio, do take note that there are dependencies here. So if you plug them into some cheap laptop that I have for my work, which is this Dell that I have, they will sound the, like the crappiest headphones ever, but don't be fooled because these headphones are good. The reason it may be bad is because the Dell comes with a lousy onboard DAC, uh, which is digital to analog converter. 
Plugging the Edifier into my Mac sounds a billion times better and you can then really enjoy your high-res audio there. So that is the scenario here. So high-res means you have to plug it in with the wires, but it also depends on your source and whether that source is good. So this is a test to see if the Edifier W820NB is a good headphones for making phone calls. So this is me speaking in a relatively quiet environment and this is the call quality that you can expect. So what I'm going to do now is to turn on a simulated background noise so you can hear a difference. So now there's a simulated background noise playing in the background and this is the call quality that you can expect from the headphones. So what do you think of the call quality? Let me know in the comment section. So, so these headphones come with 80 millisecond gaming mode, not the fastest in the world, but for casual gamings in real time, you honestly don't see noticeable lag and they are quite enjoyable honestly. So slowing it down, you can see that there are a bit of lag here. Watching videos and movies with these are really good with no lag at all. So anyways, let's take a look at the latency performance of these headphones. So overall, I think these are a really great pair of budget ANC headphones that sounds really good. It doesn't really matter that it doesn't have the highest quality built here, but for US60, really there's nothing about the headphones design that I will complain about. Well, probably one thing, which is the lack of carrying case. If Edifier were to throw that in, this would be a perfect budget headphones combo. So that is it for this review. If you find this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button, share this video everywhere. And if you haven't yet subscribed, do consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.